One of the glittering hopes of the future can be summed up in two words, geothermal everywhere. If the world's going to decarbonize in a reasonable time frame and at a reasonable cost, we're going to need a low carbon heat source and power source that's 24 seven, non-weather dependent, can be implemented almost anywhere in the world. It is a constant and very efficient source of renewable energy. There are only a few candidates for that role, nuclear fission and fusion, perhaps carbon capture and storage on natural gas and super hot rock geothermal. To get the whole country behind climate action, the solutions can't all be branded as green and left. And that's what's exciting about geothermal. On top of its promise of abundant, and reliable clean energy, it's congenial to fossil fuel states and their vast infrastructure. Today, heroic individuals who've spent their entire careers working for the very industry that is blamed for the climate crisis are developing the technologies capable of delivering geothermal everywhere. The ground is shifting under every single one of those hurdles, pardon the pun. It seems like every single one of those hurdles is really loosening. And that is the thing that gives me hope. We all know that there's unlimited energy right under our feet, but it's been tantalizingly hard to access cost-effectively. I am very excited about the possibility that we will continue to develop our geothermal potential. Drill, baby, drill for heat, not oil. It's an idea whose time has come. It's happening. Buckle up. This is going to be amazing. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to week four of Geothermal Around the World, a pivot series. And week four is all about ideas and technologies shaping next generation geothermal. So I guess good morning, good afternoon, and even good evening are in order since this is going across the world. Before I actually get into it, I would really like to thank the organizers of Pivot uh, for organizing this conference across the world, both in hybrid and in-person sessions. It's quite an effort to do that, and it seems to be going really well. So thank you for that, and all the panelists and everyone else who's put time into making this a success. When we look at week four, uh, there's some really interesting sessions. We're going to look at uh, a couple of sessions on drilling, uh, geothermal applications for dr drilling automation, drilling the geothermal well of the future, and then looking at the market, you know, market commitments and demand pool mechanisms, uh, as well as looking at, you know, what the market will be in the long term and the mix. And we're even going to explore how artificial intelligence or AI can be used for geothermal. So let me give you a bit of a perspective with a slant on technology uh, from around the world. As I recently just returned from actually traveling across the global geothermal community. Uh, from, from here where in North America, where I'm based, to Germany, then to China, then to Indonesia. So when we look at uh, North America, where I'm based, you have all segments, all flavors of geothermal over here. You have conventional geothermal, hydro, hydrothermal, you have low to medium enthalpy plays, you have the new frontiers of geothermal, you know, uh, enhanced geothermal systems, advanced geothermal systems, and even growing direct use, both uh, shallow geothermal with heat pumps and deep direct use. Uh, North America also has the largest installed uh, power generation base. So why is that? You know, and kind of relating it to the topics that we have this week. Well, 
first of all, I'd like to bring up government support, right? The DOE has been instrumental in working together with organizations and groups to develop, not only develop, but to pilot technologies. We ourselves at Baker Hughes have been a beneficiary, and I'm sure many others have. Everyone knows about the FORGE project. And this is, has been a key factor in the growth of different technologies and the different new frontiers of geothermal in North America. Also, from a market pull perspective, things like the California mandate, where you have a, you know, there's an, uh, basically an obligation for a certain amount of power to come from 24 hour renewable base load, which is really geothermal, that's helped as well. You still have issues around permit thing and timing and uncertainty, but you know that those two factors are key. Then you know, looking at technology, you know, we have two talks on tech on drilling, right? So why is drilling so important? I think many of us know, and it's good to be reminded that the well construction phase of a geothermal project is around half the total cost of the uh, of the project. So it is extremely important. Uh, not just that, but uh, it's actually re regardless of which type of play you're talking about, which segment of geothermal you're talking about, uh, drilling technology and innovation is required. So on my first talk, I was actually in Germany at a drilling conference in Seller that was focusing on these aspects. So, you know, whether you're looking at uh, conventional hydrothermal, where you have to get deeper and to hotter horizons in, in harsh environments, uh, or you're looking at uh, EGS, where you need to place increasingly longer laterals in accurately in harsh environments, or AGS, where you're trying to go from simple retrofits all the way to complicated uh, well designs to maximize surface area that require drilling technology. And not to leave out direct use, especially deep direct use, where well placement is, is critical. And uh, you know certainly challenges have to be overcome. And in Germany, this this is one of the aspects that they look at in terms of how you can integrate data from seismic together with measurements you're making while you're drilling to reduce the risk of inaccurate well placement. Then you come to the aspect of reliability. You know, Germany is a big deep di direct use market. Gas prices are driving, uh, you know, like a, a, a lot of extreme growth for geothermal potentially. And it's always been, uh, you know, a, a factor in Germany. So reliability becomes very important because remember you're delivering on the production side heat to consumers. And if they lose that heat, you know, they're exposed. Uh, they, they'll, you know, geothermal itself, reputation will fall. You need to provide alternative sources of energy. So reliability is key. And why I bring this up is most of the wells require artificial lift or ESPs. So, and that's where reliability is so important. And that's where, again, government can play a role. At Baker Hughes, we joined together with the German government to fund uh, the development of more reliable ESPs in, in environments with scale. And that's been very successful. Uh, and then, you know, moving from here, my next stop was actually China for the World Geothermal Congress. And China have done a staggering amount of work in terms of shallow geothermal direct use applications and have the largest install base in the world. Now, it's a factory approach with an integrated supply chain. It took a long, lot of long-term thinking, but the takeaway from a technology perspective I want to bring here is collaboration. Because from the beginning, uh, China and the Icelandic geothermal community worked together to get where they are today. So that's another aspect, apart from you know technology itself, funding from government, market pull, there's also collaboration. From there, I, I went to Indonesia, where, you know, typically it's been dominated by high entropy uh, steam uh, resource. But now, if you look at the future, 80% of, of that future is low and medium entropy. So binary and hybrid systems, ESPs, and, uh, and other technologies that have already been implemented in low, low to medium entropy plays in places like North America, 
uh, need to be harnessed. Now, there are trade-offs. Uh, you know, any one of these technologies has an impact because you're dealing with pre you know, the impact of pressure regimes, permeability, and even fluid chemistry with acidic formations. So applying that technology through the right workflow where you're connecting the subsurface to surface and looking at how you your exploitation strategy from well fields against how you connect this to your surface uh, infrastructure is critical, not just to optimize performance, but to minimize risk of unintended consequences. We have a talk on AI later, and maybe that will shed some more light on this uh, for the future. Now, the other, uh, the other with these moving to these types of systems will also require government support in the form of tariffs that support potentially higher cost solutions like we're talking about. So to summarize, you know, when we look at, or, or you know, my, my takeaways in terms of geothermal around the world from a holistic uh, technology deployment perspective is one, government support is going to be key, both for technology development and piloting, but also for creating market pool, whether that be tariff, incentives, or even mandates. Drilling technology is a big factor, and it rightly so. There's a lot of focus on it. It's applicable in every play and, uh, and has a huge impact on cost. Collaboration, not just between uh, uh, organizations, but between countries, will also be critical. And sharing those learnings from around the world, which service companies can help do, because in you know for most part, the service companies create the technology and are all over the world. And finally, making sure you manage risk and optimize performance in these new challenging plays through workflows that help you apply these technologies in the right way. So th that's what I have for today. I'm really looking forward to the week four sessions and I hope you are too. And I'm sure we'll all have a great week and learn something. Thanks a lot.